Jesse Owen with the Guild Realty Group here to uh, talk and be really excited about a new video series we're going to do. Just kind of going into a lot of the myths, some of the do's and don'ts about the real estate world. Today we're going to focus on the home buying process. So I've got a couple people here, a couple members from the team of Guild Realty Group, Donnie and Melissa Parker, and Craig Anderton from Bank of England. A couple things about the process, and this is where I want to start out with you, Craig. All right, so from a lender's perspective, what are some things for a buyer that doesn't know anything about the process? What can they do that's going to help them be more effective? One thing to realize is that you're going to be an open book when the process starts. Um, so if there's anything in there that you don't want somebody to see or you think may cause a problem, then it fixed prior to starting the process. Um, cash is king in most cases, except for if you're borrowing money. Cash is hard to trace. No large cash deposits. You don't want to have a lot of things moving around within your bank account. Uh, you want to present a good credit history, and you want to be able to trust and be open with your lender, just like they they are with their realtor. Tell everything on the books, and we can, uh, you know, as long as you're not breaking any laws, we can usually fix any problem that's out there. Okay. So, what are some things that people have done, let's say, last minute? You know, that kind of held them up from being able to buy a house. One thing a lot of people do is the phrase, it's my money, why do they care? Um, a lot of laws are made for criminals. They're not made for people that follow the law. So if you have been saving your bonus or per diem checks in a pickle jar, and then you put $6,000 in the bank, you're going to have to prove where that money came from. Um, it's not innocent until proven guilty. It's guilty until you're proven innocent in the case of a large sum of cash. So, so avoid cash, get your money right, and uh, be able to explain any kind of assets or uh, transfers that you have in your bank account because they are going to want to know about it. Okay. Yeah. All right. Good. All right. Well, on top of that, so we've got a lot of other parts of this that obviously from an agent's perspective, you know, really, it's, it's the daily grind of trying to get your buyers through and trusting get them to trust you to work with them as far as getting to the closing table. So from an agent's perspective, what is it that you think is effective from the get-go with your buyers to kind of help them be successful buyer? Definitely going through the pre-qualification process. Um, giving them people that we trust as far as lenders who we've worked with in the past. Um, but it's sometimes it's good to put their process in hold. Like, you know, I'm sure Craig's seen this many times. I mean, the thing that's critical is that you got to be honest with your agent. You know, Craig said this earlier, it's a 30-day relationship. It needs to be a completely trustworthy, honest opportunity between both parties that they're open about what's going on in their finances. So we can definitely get them pointing in the right direction. Obviously, it's our job to find them a home, but it's equally important it's our job to find them a smooth path, a path to purchasing that home. Yeah. You know, a lot of times we get referrals as real estate agents, and usually that good referral doesn't come from, oh, we love our home, we love our agent. It's usually because of the hard stuff, like having them sit down with someone like Craig, having them go through the pre-qualification process. That's really what we remember the most about buying homes is that stressful financial path that you've yeah. got to go through. And that's what our job as real estate agents is, is, you know, is to make sure that we know what's going on. They're prepared to handle what may happen around the corner. And with proper education from Craig, Craig and them, I think uh, it's, it's, it's a good thing. It's something that all real estate agents need to pay attention to. Equally as important as finding them a perfect home is educating them on the buying process. I agree. And part of that, I would say also, I mean, is communication. So not just helping them find the house and then handing them off to the lender, yeah. but the communication from both of you to coordinate with your client 
to get them to the, the to the table to help them close. Is that communication between the agent and the lender as important as a communication between the client? Absolutely. Nobody likes a surprise, and the truth is always going to come out in this process. Um, it's a thorough process. It's it's a it's a lot of money, and so no surprises up front. It just makes everybody happy. Yeah, yeah. I agree. So one thing I would say, um, and it's for me being in the military and then kind of getting into real estate, uh, we have a big thing called a dream sheet. So in the military, the dream sheet is you know, pick your duty station based on your job, where you want to live, all the fun things you can do around it. But from a buying perspective, when you're creating a dream sheet and you're trying to get them to lay out, you know, what's your price point, you know, how many bedrooms you want, and all the other aspects of it. As far as an agent goes, how important is it to get them to kind of find out what's, you know, what you really need to hit on? Because from the military perspective, we created dream sheets that sometimes you never got anything that was in your top 10. So how do you get the client to find something that's going to make them appreciate and value you know, your listening to them to get into the, in the house they want? Well, for me, you know, like I like to you know relate my history in buying homes. I like to tell stories about hey, you know, I wasn't always a real estate agent. I'm passionately one now, but I know how stressful it can be buying a home. So sometimes telling real life stories helps the client relax a little bit. You know, I just dealt with someone who had some tough financial uh, struggles, and it was a long path. And we actually worked with Bank of England on this deal. And it was a long journey for him. He's been through a lot. So I was able to maybe give him some comparisons of my stories and some things that maybe my family went through. And it helps it, you know, it helps him calm down a little bit that you know, we're real people, we understand the struggles of finance, and we understand the struggles of getting a mortgage or getting out of debt if you're in debt or creating a, a goal to hit your financial goals in life. So I know for me and Melissa, like we're so personable, like we wrap our arms around our clients and say it's okay, like we get it. We're li we've lived those same processes you're living today. You know, you're not an alien, you're not foreign, you're not the only one out there dealing with this. Yeah. You come to Bank of England, they'll, they'll tell you story after story after story where people are going through this and these guys are skilled and professional enough to get you to where you want to go. So for me, it's, you know, there's fancy matrices I can come up with, but I like just to say, hey, I know what you're dealing with because we're human, we deal with it too. That's right. it, it's, it's software and math, sure. but there is a solution. And so, um, if you just, if you, if you come and have an open mind and, uh, and listen to the solution and follow the plan, there's usually an answer. Uh, as far as the, the dream or the, the dream sheet, uh, it's good to listen to that too because a lot of people, um, there's different ways to pick out a house. There is, born, and there is, I want my house payment to be this. There's people that are, um, there's lots of different situations. Either you're, you're working on one income and not using the other spouse or partner's income for whatever reason, and so you want to buy as much house as you can get approved for. And there's other people who <clears throat> make enough money and can afford way more house than they're willing to buy it off, but have their mindset on what they want to spend. So that's another thing to, to listen to people and, and find, find that price point for them to shop in. Yeah, I agree. I think the ultimate, it, the, in closing for this is that when you're creating a dream sheet, you're preparing them for you know getting pre-qualified and going through the process, is that you've got to tell them what they need to hear, yeah. not what they want to hear all the time. We want them to find the house that they love and that they want to have for their family, for if it's retirement, whatever it is. But you also have to give them that reality that says, what's important to you and what can we do to make sure that when you walk into your home that you're happy and satisfied, that everyone listening can get the service that you expect. So. And I think that goes back to, uh, it's not just the realtor-client relationship, it's also the realtor-lender relationship. Because the lender does his homework and then he can come back to us and we can we can be on the same page and then sometimes right. it's easier for us to get on the same page with the client and then us all get together. Because as far as like the stories of dream sheets, you know, everybody has a dream sheet they want a big house. Everybody wants this big, nice, wonderful house and they want to be able to afford it too. But that's not always the case. So we've been there, done that. We've dreamed big, fought big, 
realized it just wasn't worth it. Yeah. So having the experiences puts you in a better position to be able to explain it and maybe wrangle your clients in a little bit. Yeah. Help them to understand that maybe this doesn't necessarily have to make you give up, but maybe you can kind of tame it down a little bit and then find the perfect so, um, Excellent. All right, well, this will uh, conclude our first in the series of many videos that we're going to start doing. But I just want to thank everybody for participating. Really appreciate the information from you, Craig, from the uh, lending perspective, because I think buyers need more of that education to help them get ready for the process. And I thank both of you as well. And all right, just have, have a How can we find you? Where can we find you? Yeah. Uh, you can reach me at 251-591-7037. That's my cell phone, and we don't keep hours. We, uh, Try to keep clients. Yeah, and as always, for the Guild Realty Group, you know, there's a lot of different ways. It's the Guild Realty Group.com. You can contact us at 251 270 3032. And then, of course, you, know, you guys can you know, give out your information as well. Yeah, we're the Parker team of the Guild Realty Group. You can catch us at 205 541 5005. I'm on the listing side, so if you're looking to list your home, give me a call. I'd love to sit down with you and share some information. My lovely wife here, she's on the buyer's side. Her number is 205-405-0335. All right, thank you.